Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. Today's video is perfect for my first time painters. For those of you that have never picked up a brush, never tried painting, or just even a little scared to try painting at home. Um, in these videos, we'll go over exactly what you need to do step by step. So this is a perfect video for you. What you're going to see in the description box below, there is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular video. So check that out, grab what you need, and then come back to the video. After you've completed this video, check out my other beginner painters and even advanced beginner painters on this channel. And then when you're ready to kind of take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com, and you'll see a lot of intermediate classes as well as my advanced, uh, my beginner class, Paint Your Pet. And um, we're just going to take the skills that you learn here and build upon them. So when you're ready for your next level, check out my online school. Um, with this particular video, if you feel like switching out colors, go right ahead and do that. I do encourage that you trust your instincts while you are painting um, and just use the video as kind of a base guideline, but deviate from it if you feel compelled to do that. So let's go ahead, get everything together, and let's get started painting. <laughs> guys it's gonna be another fun painting for my first time painters so grab your supplies turn on your favorite music and as always make sure you take your progress photos now we are going to be start uh, basically doing this with a very simple color palette we're just going to use three colors today and you're going to get just kind of comfortable with blending and mixing your paint so we're going to start off with a light blue and that is white with a little bit of blue and we're going to draw a U shape first and then we're going to do like the little old school wave marks um, in between to, for the top. And this is going to be the bottom of our umbrella. And then when we do these little wave marks, it's going to be the top of our umbrella. And this is just so we know where to not paint our background. So if you need to pause the video, get this image on there, and then we're going to move up to a large flat brush and fill in the whole background with a light blue. So don't stress too much about drawing that part of your umbrella, just get it on there. And then um, we'll kind of reshape it as we add the color for the umbrella. So we are going with a very light blue and you can try a few different brush strokes. You can try using the full width of your brush, the sky sideways one, or even making X marks. So whichever one you feel comfortable with, stick with that as we are filling in the space. And it is, we're gonna start at the top, we're gonna to be lighter at the top and then get a little bit darker as we go towards the bottom. And you'll notice that I actually mix this color two and three times um, as I go out, go through filling in the canvas space. So if you have to mix your color a couple of times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every time. A little variety is gonna to be to your benefit. And then we're also gonna do a little bit of wet on wet blending. I really just want you to kind of have fun right now as you're painting, escape from the rest of the world for a little bit, and enjoy the process of filling up um, this blank canvas space into something that you created. Now make sure you're taking a deep breath, relax, just kind of have fun with this, don't take yourself too seriously. And I do recommend pausing the video, take your progress photo. I am moving down to a smaller brush and kind of a medium blue. Um, or a little bit darker than what you were just using. We're gonna fill in that bottom portion of the canvas and overlap some of that lighter blue. And where you overlap that lighter blue, I am using kind of light pressure, but you'll see where you kind of create a new shade in between that light blue and kind of the medium blue that you're using. This is called wet on wet blending. And here we can grab some of that direct blue. We're gonna go right underneath that umbrella and this is kind of giving it a shadow element and you start right at the bottom of the umbrella and then just zigzag your brush down towards the bottom of the canvas. And then we'll go back up through this and just kind of soften that into your background. Now you do wanna do this while your background is still wet. That's why this is called wet on wet blending. And again, play with that light pressure 
You can even have your brush at kind of a 45 degree angle and that will alleviate some of the brush strokes that will be made. But if your brush strokes are showing up on yours, just embrace it. That's where you're painting for today. And if you need to, you can go back like I'm doing, grabbing more of that blue. It keeps a bit more of the direct, more solid, darker pigment on there. And if you want, you can even wipe that brush off, grab a little bit of the white. You can go back up to the top and start throwing that in there or even throwing it in at the bottom. So as you go along today's painting, you're just kind of observing the general place of where I put stuff and mimicking that to the best of your ability. So here at the top, as we put that uh, kind of medium blue into the light blue, you'll see how quickly it kind of diffuses and fades and kind of creates just a different shade. Play with this. This is one of the funnest aspects of the beginning uh, stages of painting. Now, before we move into the umbrella, we're actually grabbing a little bit of red and putting it in the shadow. Because this is a rainy day, the color of the umbrella would reflect onto the ground. So by grabbing some of this red, and kind of putting it into the blue, it might create a little bit of a purple, but it has that hint of red, and again, tells our brain that we have this, um, the color of the umbrella reflecting onto the ground. All right, and then uh, clean your brush. Uh, you can go back to white paint, um, do anything that you want to your background um, before we move into the next step of the umbrella. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit, play with that pressure, if you want, even get out of your chair and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. Assess, do you want a little more blue maybe here? Do you want a little more white somewhere else? Again, just kind of play with moving the paint, blending it a little bit and getting comfortable with the process of painting. You're doing a great job. So pause that video. It is okay if you wanna let this part dry or you can move right into painting your umbrella. And if you feel like changing the color of your umbrella, if you prefer a purple or a green or a yellow umbrella, go right ahead and change it. Now we are just kind of basically recreating that shape. So we've got the spokes of the umbrella at the top and then that nice kind of curve of the umbrella because it is, uh, this little umbrella is kind of lost in the rain and he's upside down. Um, I did see the really cute little Pixar, I I'm pretty sure it was Pixar, uh, little red umbrella. Uh, animation. It was super, super cute. So if you can find that, um, take a look at it and just enjoy the cute little story. All right. So pause that video, take your progress photo. We're going to move back to the pointy brush and the medium blue, and we're going to put the handle of the umbrella on. And this is giving the red some time to dry because we're going to put two coats of the red because student grade paints a bit more transparent. So you can apply two layers of it for more opaque coverage. So with this light blue or medium blue, uh, we're gonna basically make um, kind of an upside down J shape for the handle of the brush. And as soon as my hand moves, you'll be able to see it. Um, and then we'll go in with some dark blue for the darker, darker handle part. And if you are finding that your brush is kind of shaky as you go to apply your paint, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will help um, aid in keeping you steady. Uh, with that being said, this gets easier with more practice. So if this is your very first painting, um, when you paint your second painting and third painting, stuff that you're learning right now will make even more sense. So I encourage all my students to try to find a creative outlet on a regular basis. So we're still using the blue and we're gonna kind of make the little um, ripple lines of the rain that would be uh, dropping from the sky and creating the ripple lines on the ground. So you don't have to do a full circle, but we're just given a hint of it. And I'm treating the brush kind of like a pencil using just the tip of it and almost holding that brush perpendicular to the canvas. And notice that every uh, couple of brush strokes, I go back and grab more paint. So make sure you're doing that for yourself at home. Then we're gonna clean the brush really good. We're gonna go to white paint. We'll do the same um, few little areas of the ripple lines, but also doing a bit of a splash mark. So some um, vertical lines kind of going up, imagining that the uh, droplet of water uh, hit the ground and created a bit of a splash. Now this does not have to be exact, 
Um, it's kind of an impressionistic painting, really simple lines, and it's amazing that with the impressionistic painting, um, our brain fills in the extra details. So again, you don't have to get every single detail in. And here you can see these little dash marks. This is the rain coming down, um, kind of coming down at an angle. Um, make sure you're doing that. And I believe in this video, I did not overlap any on the umbrella. So after we finish the next step on the umbrella, I would recommend going back and putting a few little rain droplets that um, overlap the red umbrella. So pause the video, take that progress photo. We're going to go back to the red and give it a second coat. And just notice how the second coat makes it more opaque um, and just a, a more solid, nicer color. And we're going to do the same thing that we did in the background. We're laying this base color of the red, and then we're going to go in with some blue for our shadow element, add something darker, and then we're going to go in with our white and add the highlights. And again, I like this painting because we kept it with literally three colors, red, blue, and white. All right, so moving down to that pointy brush, grabbing some blue. Uh, we're basically putting the spokes of the umbrella in. So I want you just to observe the place where I put each of these. Mimic that on your canvas uh, to the best of your ability. And this is just getting you more comfortable with the process of painting. So after I put the blue on there, we're going to wipe that brush off. And then with light pressure, you just kind of smush that blue into the red a little bit. It may create a bit of a purple. That's okay. Um, but again, you're creating that shading. Um, to create a depth of a 3D object on your flat 2D surface. And we're also using that residual blue paint on the brush for a few other areas. So again, just observe where you see me place each of these and mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. Remember to look at your painting from that distance as well, and some of this makes even more sense. Same thing with the white. Clean that brush really good. We're going to put the white in a few specific areas. So just mimic what you see on your canvas. Remember to breathe. You're doing a great job. All right, this came together really nicely. Please do not wait too long to do your next painting. It only gets better and more comfortable with practice. We are putting that highlight on the left-hand side of um, the handle on the umbrella. So great job, you guys. And until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope how you liked how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing those. I try to post them on social media um, and encourage other beginners and first time painters to try painting. So please share this with your community and keep getting creative. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, things you want me to paint in the future, go ahead and leave a comment and I will um, answer them as quickly as I can and try to get those new paintings um, in my production list and on the rotation. So thanks again for taking time out of your day to get creative with me. Don't wait too long to do your next one. And until then, cheers.